book of Daniel. I know book of Daniel is so important. I am teaching book of Daniel for the last 30 years, 3 zero years in Spicer. And uh, sometimes we teach two times, we used to do that before. But now, because of the university program, we teach once in a year, book of Daniel. Now, always I ask my students in the first class and they attend and say, Why? Book of Daniel. Do we have? 39. 39? Out of 39 books. Now, we are uh, making almost compulsory. You go to any Adventist college and university. Book of Daniel is important. Without that, they cannot graduate. Why we are making Book of Daniel so important? Why we are making Book of Daniel so important? I know I came up uh, by God's grace with a
God is my church. Show the individual. I know many times we cannot receive judgment, proper judgment, right judgment, positive judgment in this world in the courts. As it is Supreme Court, High Court, any court. You don't get judgment because or we are not able to get judgment in many times, so many times in so called committees. We don't get even that important committee which went years ago, 70 members committee, they are the ones made a decision, unanimous decision to crucify Christ. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes, all of them said that. So like that today, there are many, that is, that is unjust, isn't it? Totally now injustice. That things are happening even today in this nation, even more in communities also, church communities. Not only that, but the church are the church misses also. So that's why God is the church. God will deliver judgment to you and me. So that's why when we depend on God, surely God will act in time and who will judge us, will do the judgment. And also the meaning also of that God is my church and this book talks about the judgment. Until 2008, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So the judgment begins in heavenly sanctuary. This is what we call as a what is the judgment mean? Interesting. Investigative judgment. Or sometimes they call it as a pre-advent judgment. So the judgment. This book starts with judgment. So that's why this book is important. Then, this is the uniqueness. Another thing is, this book is only the book in the whole Bible, written in two different languages. Two different languages. No other book is written in two languages. Only in the whole Bible. Whether it is Old Testament or New Testament. What are those two languages? Arabic. One was Aramaic. Aramaic language was international language in those days when they said that it. it was Babylonian language. And Daniel wrote chapter 2 up to 7 in that Aramaic language. Because King Daniel did the Daniel dream. He covered the dream. He wanted the dream and the meaning also. Then he got all the wise men of the Babylon. All the musicians, soothsayers, and all those particulars, they came and they began to speak to the king in their language. Daniel chapter 2 was three on this. In their language, they began to speak. That's the only language. But Daniel, no, they were speech and the uh, king's answer and everything. He wrote in Aramaic language because Daniel mastered the language. Daniel was a what we call a great in Indian word, Pandit. Pandit of the languages. So that you will learn thoroughly the language and you go the 2 to 7 chapters. Then chapter 8 to 12. This is a, a blessed book, as I said, because Daniel is a blessed book. And uh, so Daniel died. Because Daniel was in his 90s. But you will rise up, you will arise, and you will receive your reward at the end time. Which means assurance was given to Daniel in a life. No person, no prophet, no Bible the character or no other person. From, uh, even Abraham who was a friend of God because of his faith. Even he did not have that assurance. Only Daniel. You read the whole Bible where God told directly, you are going to rise and you should die, you are going to die, you are going to again resurrect or rise up to receive your reward. Only Daniel. What a blessing! For each one of us to learn that assurance so that you and I also can have that assurance and if Lord Jesus is coming in long, some of us who are advancing in age and if you die, show me that assurance is there. You will also rise up one day so that you will have that inheritance that is each and life. There is also one other uh, uh, many uniquenesses in this, uh, very special things in this uh, book, uh, Daniel. And as we said, the book of Daniel is so important, so important for us because this book is Christ-centered book. This book is Christ-centered book in the whole Old Testament. Daniel book tells more about Jesus than any other book in the whole Old Testament. I know the uh, book of Isaiah is called as Gospel Prophet. Isaiah was called as Gospel Prophet. Because Isaiah tells about special the suffering and the but more than Daniel, sorry, more than Isaiah. Daniel tells more about Jesus.
than any other book in the Old Testament. Every chapter we fill, every chapter we fill, tell us about Jesus. Every chapter we fill, 12 chapters. Quickly we will run down, we will go to all that. Quickly. One, chapter one. God gave to Babylon, the king of uh, Babylon, the American nation. Now, king, uh, now, Jehoiah king and Jerusalem into his hands. God gave. Now, when it says God gave in the hands of the uh, Jewish, sorry, Lincoln is the Babylonian king. Who is that God? Is he God of God? Who is God? Judah and the king, those wicked people in the hands of Babylonians. Answer undoubtedly it is God the Son. Why? It is God the Son who deals with the it is God the Son who created this world, not God the Father. There is a misunderstanding from many people, even unfortunately some of the pastors and leaders. They are thinking, God, not at all. It is God the Son. Here we are told, He will shall His Son He created the words. And Galatians chapter 1, 14, 15, and 16 says, It is God the Son who created visible things as Things. That means things on this earth, things in the other planets. It is God the Son who created. It is that creator who visited Adam and Eve every day. That creator is the one who is controlling. It is this God who handed over Jerusalem, Jewish people in the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar. And it is that God who praying people. Definitely it is God who did that one. That is God the Son. Then in chapter 2, it is more clear. Head of gold, chest of silver, and all of that. Then that image, that statue was beaten uh, and broken into pieces, made into powder by that rock. It was cut without a hand. Then later, that rock spread and it became a huge mountain. It uh, occupied the whole earth. That God is who? Jesus. Yeah. Is Christ. That God is Christ. Even in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, Jesus told Peter, Peter, I am going to build my choice on this rock. That God is Jesus, not Peter. Yes, in chapter 2, we can see that rock is the kingdom of Christ, which will be forever and ever. All the kingdoms of this world will be no more after the second time. That rock is Jesus and his kingdom, which is coming soon. Third chapter, and in the fire for the shadow of the coming because they were there. And Jesus came down to be with them. And they were there as a heathen man. And a king, and he said, The fourth one looks like who? Son of, son of man. Or in fact, son of God. Son of God, he says. Which means, son of God and son of man are two favorite uh, now terms for Jesus who uh, Jesus used for himself on this earth. That's why Jesus came down. Maybe there is an assurance for each one of us. When you're in trouble, when you're in sickness, when you're in trauma, when you're in suffering, to help you. So they didn't, they did not have you met. The clothes also did not smell, the fire smell. You know that one. Jesus protected, God has protected them. Jesus can do that for even today, because Jesus is the same as today, today, and for ever. He's the same. So Jesus can help us. That's why right. it's a wonderful book. Chapter 4. And a huge tree, almost touching up in the sky, represented the incarnation and his But there is a holy watcher came down. Then in chapter 4, verse 14, 15, and 16, Holy Watcher came down and he commanded and said, Cut out the tree. And Jesus. Jesus is the one who commanded, Cut out the tree. Temporarily, of course, for seven years. Then, seven years, there was man. He gave grass like animal. After seven years, he repented and God accepted him. And he says, there is no God like the God of heaven. 
He rules forever. His dominion is forever. That is Jesus. Because Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lord. Revelation 19 verse 16. That's the holy water is Jesus, God the Son. That's in every chapter. Then chapter 5, that wicked uh, Belshazzar would rank on the hall, even in the cups of uh, Jerusalem temple, the vessels. Then God was angry. The hand of God came, the part of his hand, like the fingers came and wrote on the wall, meaning, meaning, take it for person. Surely there is the presence of God the Son in chapter 5. That is Jesus. Chapter 6. Then, innocent person. Innocent person. The full total committee, so to speak. Then, plotted, planned to kill Daniel. You know, do we also do sometimes like that? The total committee, sometimes unanimously. It can be church committee or any other committee. It can be a church board. Do we also decision and someone to eliminate someone? They did that. But they were heathen people. They are God's people. How can we do that? Just then into lines then. Then came. Who came? The angel of the Lord. Early morning that king came. Uh, that is the me. And said, Oh Daniel, who the uh, the one who served uh, the living God continually, did you, God, save you from the lions? He said, Yes, God, yes, King. My God sent his angel and sh shut the mouths of the lions. Plural word, not one lion, many lions. But who was that angel? Sometimes we are thinking angel, ordinary angel. But many times the Old Testament, now Jesus is referred, God the Son is referred, or God is referred as the angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord. For example, in Moses in uh, Exodus uh, 3, when he saw the burning bush and he went closer and the voice told, then uh, uh, Moses, the place where you are standing is a holy ground, remove your shoes. You remember? Then, Lord, you are speaking, Lord, they will like me. They will ask, what is your name? Lord, what should I do? He's addressing Lord, that angel. It is not said as angel, but he's addressing Lord. Surely it is Lord God, that is Jesus. Surely the one who protected Daniel home, that was none other than Jesus, the angel of the Lord. And often we come to that word the end of this book. Uh, Jesus is referred as Michael, the Michael, the chief of angels. He says many times, translated, that is a translation. Again, so Jesus is here in chapter 6, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. And Son of Man came into the ancient of the days to receive the kingdom. This is the judgment. Then in 7, verse 13 and 14, Son of Man, that is Jesus, came to receive the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to God, but the kingdom is illegally taken by Satan. That's supposed to be ruled by Adam, the representative of God, but he illegally Satan to that one. This is what we call in English one word you say. You say Satan is this uh, uh, power. Then the kingdom will be given back to Jesus, God the Son, and his things. This is at the end of the the, the end of the beginning. So, so chapter 7 and also chapter 7 verse 26 and 27 kingdom is given to the saints. Soon, when Jesus comes the second time, Jesus will rule as king of kings and Lord of God. The whole universe, not only this world, whole universe is going to rule. Because there are so many other worlds, unnumbered worlds in the universe. This is only one world where there is sin. But the saints were faithful to God. They will reflect. They will rule with him. Toward the eternity. This is what Daniel is from chapter 7. Verse 11. It is a little horn magnified himself up to the prince of the host, king of the host. The Hebrew word is called S A R, which means heavenly. Who is that heavenly? 
See, those who turn people to righteousness, which means people, anyone who leads somebody to Christ, through your Bible study, your message, through your testimony, or through encouraging, or just just calling them and say, come to church, let's go to church today. If you want to, I can drive you to church. Whatever it means you are doing, or you are sending some Bible study uh, lessons, or you are sharing some online, Facebook or uh, YouTube, whatever it is. Whatever you are doing, people who are turning them to righteousness, that is to Christ, they will shine like what? Stars forever. That's why right. each one is not only the director of the union, Pastor Babu. It is not, not only the work of the church pastor here, Pastor Chanaya. It is not the work of the professor Babu from Saisa University. It is the work of every church member, isn't it? If you want to shine like Christ, forever. If you want to shine as stars, I'll invite you to that one in this uh, book called Christ of the Lessons, page 1, 2, 3, 123. She says, Each person whom you lead to Christ, and one star is added into your crown. If you are leading 100 people, 100 stars in your crown. God is recognizing little more what you are doing. Church board may not have any idea what you are doing for Christ. And church uh, pastors and church leaders may not have any idea. The leaders may not uh, know what you are doing for Christ. But Christ is noting, noticing every small thing what you are doing for Christ. He will reward you. Amen. That's it. Even if you are praying for someone, for healing, for conversion, uh, for the, uh, uh, God's blessing, whatever you are doing, God recognizes and God will bless us. This is Daniel. That's it. Every book, every chapter is telling about Jesus. That's why it's Christ centered. Okay. One more thing. Any question on this? One. Yes, sir. There are four common circles are there. Which is the reputation. So, what is the purpose of the vocabulary? Thank you, sir. Now we have come to this one the prophecies. This is called apocalyptic prophecy. What is apocalyptic prophecy? Apocalyptic prophecy is a style of writing in which they use some symbols, some trees, some animals, some mountains to represent a nation, to represent a king, to represent some worldly powers. Daniel was given to be, uh, written in this apocalyptic style. But Daniel was not only the one from the time of Daniel in the 6th century BC up to 1st century AD, up to the time of John. Uh, who wrote the book of Revelation. This style of writing was uh, very, very common. Many secular writers also use this kind of uh, symbolic language, which we call apocalyptic literature. That's why it is written in apocalyptic uh, style. But for every symbol which uh, is used in Daniel or in Revelation, we have that explanation and answer in the Bible itself. For example, now, those ten horns and the little horn used in chapter 7, verses 7. Then, angel Gabriel gave explanation said, Daniel, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings. Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. Then, these are animals. Daniel was shown lion, bear, leopard, and the terrible beast which has the uh, iron teeth and ten horns. Then we did not understand. And the angel again gave explanation. Daniel chapter 7 verse 16 and 17 says, Daniel, the four animals, four beasts which you saw are four kingdoms. So, angel is giving explanation. God is giving explanation. Or let us say, in Daniel chapter 8, there is a bear. One side is low, another side is high. And also, it has two horns. One horn is short, one horn is long. That is uh, now ram. There is lamb, there is male sheep, but we call lamb. Then, there is also Daniel saw a he goat, a male goat, and between the eyes of that male goat there is a big horn. Daniel did not understand. What is this lamb with two horns, one side is the one side is high? What is that he goat with a big horn between the eyes? He did not understand. It is again angel with explanation. Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. And angel Gabriel said, Daniel, that ram which you saw with two horns is Medes and Persians. Daniel, that main goat, that the he goat between the, uh, 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 the big horn between the eyes is 
Greece, and the big one is his first king. That's Alexander the Great. That's why definitely all the symbols used in Daniel as well as Revelation. The explanation is there in Daniel or Revelation in other words. For example, lion, chapter 7, uh, Daniel saw a lion with wings. But who is the lion to it represent? Definitely in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 7 it says, The lion is coming from the north. It will destroy everyone. In the recent times, archaeologists uh, located the area of Babylon, which is in Iraq today, from uh, Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, is about 60 miles. Uh, uh, all over the area of the bushes and uh, wild plants and wild animals are growing there. Then, uh, so somebody uh, fortunately found that area and they started digging that area. They dug that area for several years and they located some walls of Babylon, which are about some of them are three feet high, four feet high, but all covered with the sand. And on those walls, and now curiously speaking, and they miraculously, they found the pictures of lions. So Nebuchadnezzar made them to draw pictures of lions. That was his favorite animal. So, lion represents Babylon. That's it for any symbol used here. There is explanation. So that's why many times people say, I don't understand Daniel. I don't understand uh, Revelation. I, because so many symbols are there. Uh, that's why I'm not reading this one. This quarter we have the joy of decoding, so to speak, all of these symbols and learning the truth out of the book of Daniel. So that's why I show. So the question is asked. There is a repetition. All these uh, kingdoms. Always what happens in the prophecies of Daniel, especially apocalyptic prophecies. When uh, an information is given, then in the next time when the same thing is repeated, more details are added. For example, chapter 2. It talks about the four kingdoms. Babylon, Middle Persia. Babylon is head of gold. Middle Persia is uh, the silver. And uh, the brass is belly that is weeds, and the legs of iron or the uh, row, the feet of iron and clay that is the uh, ten divided kingdoms of Europe, and the stone kingdom is Christ. But when you come to chapter 7, again the same powers are repeated. Repetition is there. Why repetition? Because more details are added. For example, we don't have the little horn spoken anywhere in chapter 2. So little horn is taking the center place, the most, uh, let us say, dangerous place in the history of God's people. That's why more details are added here. And each chapter comes, even more details, how they attack the sanctuary. So that's why each time it is repeated, a repetition we call it. More details added, more understanding is given. That's why repetition is there. <coughs> then, there's also another thing. This is also another thing. I know the title is given from reading to understanding. But I want you to say if a chance is given. I know this author, uh, Elias uh, De Souza. I know him. He, I met him several times. He came to Spicer for the BRI Bible Research Institute. Very good scholar and uh, uh, nice. But in any given comment, in any given study, we cannot have all the small details. That's why. We will share all of them. That's why I try to upload all of these uh, more details which are not also in the book. Uh, I can do that one on uh, my Facebook and YouTube of Sushara Babu. You can uh, watch sometime at your leisure time and go home. I try to do it at least one day before if possible uh, by Friday so that it will be a blessing for each one of us. Now, Danny also was, as I said, language funded, language expert. He designed this book. He designed this book. A very meticulous poetic style. This is what they call chiasm. This is the technical word, chiasm. Chiasm means he arranged in such a way. Now, one chapter corresponds with the other chapter. For example, chiasm. In chiasm, they have six chapters. One, two, three, four, five, six. They call it A, A, B, C. Then it goes down again, reverse order, C, B, A. This is a poetic order, poetic style. It is Daniel Ari, because he was a scholar, wise man. Now I can tell you in a brief. Chapter 2 talks about 
other than like many kingdoms. Uh, God will create a question of all these kingdoms. Chapter 3. So, chapter 2, you say A. A is kingdoms. Chapter B, that is chapter uh, A is chapter 2. C, oh sorry, B. A is uh, chapter 2 about the kingdoms. Then B, B is uh, chapter 3 about when God's people are in danger, their life is in danger, they are about the, at the death point, God intervenes and delivers them. That is in Christ's structure B. So chapter 3 is God delivers Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Then C is the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter. Fourth chapter is God punished Babylon and in the desert for seven years in madness. Because it was wrong. God punished. So A, B, C. A is chapter 2 about the kingdoms. B is God's deliverance for the past people. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. C is God's punishment in Babylon. Seven years he was mad. Then, in this structure of chiasm, we call it a technical word. Again, it goes down to CBA. ABC, CBA. Then the next chapter is fine. Fine is what? Belshazzar. God punished Belshazzar. Belshazzar was killed that night. And Babylon was completely destroyed forever. Babylon kingdom is taken away. See? ABC, C also again Babylon destruction. Then B. CBA, we are coming down. B is God's people delivered in the time of trouble and death. Then it was the light stand. God delivered him. That is B. CBA, chapter 7. Chapter 7 is A. Chapter 7 talks about the kingdoms. Babylon made a question all the different symbols like lion, bear, feet, uh, leopard, and terribles. So this is the way Daniel structured the book of Daniel. And if you want also I can do that from 8 to 12 also. Chapters again that's also in Chiasm. Chiasm. So but since the, this is a now uh, not in depth uh, study of uh, if you want I can do that one but time is running away. We have to learn other uh, aspect. Book of Daniel is so important for us because book of Daniel contains five Important time prophecies, which no book in the Bible, no book in the Bible has five time prophecies. Book of Daniel has time prophecies five. What are those? You'll find that soon. What are those five time prophecies? One, Daniel seven verse twenty-five. Time, times, and dividing of a time, half a time. Time means one year, time means two years, dividing on the time of the half time is half a year, 36 months. Putting everything into uh, uh, days, converting them into days, it will come to 12, 16 days. One day is equal to one year. We know that one. Israelites are supposed to reach Canaan within 40 days. But because of their unfaithfulness, God changed the 40 days of journey into 40 years. That is Numbers chapter 14, verse 34. Numbers 14 that you call one day is equal to one year. That's why we call ELA principle. All of these time prophecies, we must count them on ELA principle. When it says one day, don't take it as a single literal day. It should be taken as one year in Daniel and Revelation. That's why this is first time process. Second time process is Daniel 14, the longest time process in the whole Bible. Until 2300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. 2300 days is 2300 years. Then chapter 9, verse 24 to 37, 70 weeks prophecy. 70 weeks means converting to, converting to, to days, it will come to 490 days. That is 490 days. Then chapter 12 contains two prophecies, 1290 days and 1335 days. You can read that only in chapter 12, verse 12. So five different time prophecies, which are not there in any Bible of the book or any book of the Bible. Any book of the Bible. Five time prophecies. That's why Daniel is important. Then we have to understand these time prophecies. We know where you live at the end time. We are living at the end time. Lastly, to close. Now, it happened, Daniel book was written in 6th century BC. I know there are some critics. They are not God's people. They don't believe in prayer. They are not spiritual people. They may have some Christian name, but they are not Christian. They are called critics. They criticize Daniel. They don't 
believe in Bible, they don't believe that God knows the future, they don't believe in miracles. But they are criticizing by saying, no, it's not possible for Daniel to write all of these things. Because he talks about the name. Sorry, it talks about uh, Belshazzar as the third, second ruler. Daniel is going to be the third ruler if he tells that uh, writing on the wall. Then he talks about uh, Alexander the Great in chapter 8 and 11. He talks about, uh, let us say, uh, now Messiah's uh, death. Then they say, no, Daniel did not write this in the 6th century. Possibly Daniel wrote this one when all of these events are over, possibly in 2nd century BC. That's wrong. Daniel wrote it in the 6th century BC and we have all kinds of evidences for that. Then, let us say, what can we learn today? What is the benefit of reading this book, which was written 2,500 years ago? What benefit it has? I know book of Daniel has the best spiritual book. Because when God's people are in uh, trouble, God comes to help. For example, children mission because they don't want to, they don't want to get the kids food and they drink that uh, grape, like a uh, wine. Then they requested the cook, Melzor, saying give us a vegetarian food and give us water to drink. What did he say? What did he say? If I do that one, king will cut my head off. King will cut my head off. He will behind me. I cannot do that. Because king commanded to give this uh, food and this drink, I have to do this. But God changed the heart of the same man who said, I cannot do this. The same man later said, okay, I will try, I will test you 10 days with the vegetarian food and water. You remember? The one who said, I cannot do it, and the same man, a different man, comes to help them. The next three years he gave them the same food. What do we learn out of that? The person who rejects you, who is not going to help you, God can change the heart of the same person to help you. To help you. Then Daniel and all the other uh, wise men were put, uh, supposed to be put to death because they could not tell. Chapter 2. But Daniel came and prayed with his friends. Then God revealed that uh, dream of King Nebuchadnezzar and the interpretation. God revealed to Daniel because of the prayer life. That's it. When you pray earnestly, even in these last days, Yes, God will reward us. God will reward us. Then, as we said, God delivered faithful people from fire, fire furnace. God delivered his faithful people from lion's den. I only have one lion. That is Satan. Satan is like a roaring lion in these last days and about to devour people, some of people. That is 1 Peter 5 8. But in the time of Daniel, God shut the mouths of the lions. God can shut the mouth of that roaring lion in these last days who is roaring against you and your family. Then, this, chap, this book of Daniel tells about two important fasting prayers. Daniel 9, he fasted and prayed. That day itself, answer was sent by God, angel Gabriel. God sent the answer. I know we have problems in our lives. We have problems in the lives of our children. We have problems in our families. We have problems in our churches. We have problems in our denomination. But we are not doing this fasting prayer. We are neglecting. Sometimes we are thinking, fasting prayer is for Pentecostal people, not for us. We are remnant people, we say. Here is Daniel, faithful son of God, prayed fasting prayer. God sent an answer immediately. If you, if you want an answer from God, my brothers and sisters in this union, try fasting prayer. Chapter 10, Daniel fasted for 21 days. He was the prime minister was fasting for 21 days. Not for himself, but for his people. God answered again, said a to give answer. Yes, take fasting. And chapter 9, verse 2 and 3. Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah. He was a prime minister, he was reading the book of Jeremiah. Are you reading the book of uh, Bible? We are neglecting. Did you any time, being an Adventist, did you finish reading the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation any time? Yes, you. Most of us ashamed to say we are people of the Bible. We are not reading. We are not finishing. Why don't you make a resolution this year and say, I want to read the whole Bible to receive a blessing. Daniel was reading. Why Daniel was blessed so much? He was brought as a slave, a captive. God, Prime Minister of Babylon. Yes, this is the book of blessings. If you want also to be blessed by God, be faithful like Daniel. 
Be prayful like that, a man of prayer. Fast when up to yours, you do well. Regularly, whatever the Bible is available to give all the books of the Bible. Yes. Do that. We will have that assurance. God said. And receive your reward in the name. Jesus is coming. This book tells about more about last days and the second coming. That's why may the Lord bless us during this part to study, to learn more. Two things we have to focus. One, what happened in those days, in the days of Daniel, what for our own lives. These two things don't forget any time. What we can learn out of this book for us today so that we Yes, it happened to Daniel. It happened to What lesson I can divide, what I can learn from this book for my life, for my family, for my church, what I can learn. You do that, you will receive a big, wonderful spiritual blessing. God bless each one of us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, classical prophecies are playing prophecies like, a, like, like Jeremiah, like uh, Isaiah, those symbols, nothing. It's called classical prophecies or some kind of ordinary prophecies. Like Amos. Example of Jonah. Yes, all the other rebels where there are no symbols, uh, it is called classical prophecies. That's good, sir. Any other clarification? There are three opposing views are there Apoderism. And the idealism. I know, I know these are the schools of prophecy. How we have to understand without Daniel and Revelation other prophecies. What is preterism is, thank you for reminding that one. And uh, uh, preterism is all the prophecies of the Daniel and Revelation and other prophecies in the Bible. Finish all of them fulfilled by percentage. That's what Catholics develop this uh, theory. Or preterism, all the prophecies finished by first century AD, which is wrong. That's why right. it's by first century AD they say this is wrong because uh, God's prophecies are fulfilling even in AD, not only up to first century AD. Another uh, prophetic school is called futurism or dispensationalism, we call it. There is the one who started this one. The first one started by Al Khazar. Al Khazar is the founder. These both are Catholics. Catholics started this uh, schools of prophecy to put down Martin Luther at that time because Martin Luther and other Protestants were calling uh, Pope as a little horn. That's why they developed uh, this uh, prophecy. The future is always oh, book of Revelation, book of Daniel, all the prophecies will be fulfilled in the last seven years before second coming. No need to worry, no need to study, no need to play with this uh, prophecy. The last day. That's what they say. That is called future. Another one is called uh, idealism, which means uh, don't worry about anything. Just you read and get, get some spiritual lesson out of prophecies of Daniel and so we take Revelation. The of the Next, our our uh, idea, uh, our uh, church is following what we call historical or historicist school of interpretation, which means the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation started. Let us say Daniel from the time of Daniel. In the time of Nebuchadnezzar, and it extends up to the end time where kingdom is given back to Mr. Christ and Mr. Saints, which means it uh, up to the end time. This is historical interpretation, which we follow as a mm -hmm. the Daniel uh, prophesied from the time in the time of Babylon, and that is going to continue till the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that means the events take taking place and will be taking place. Sure, till second coming, the prophecies which are recorded in Daniel will be fulfilling 100% one by one. We have only a small fraction of prophecies to be fulfilled the end of the world and second coming of Jesus. That's why that should be fulfilled. That's why these prophecies started in the time of Daniel, in the time of end in time, where God's kingdom is given to the saints. Yes, that's why we say, I say many times, a chapter like chapter 7 in Daniel, it contains the history from the time of Nebuchadnezzar or Belshazzar up to the end time, which means something like 3,500 years of history it covers. 3,500 years of history it covers. Now, Shabbat, I have a question. 
Yes, ma'am. There are five time bound prophecies you said. Yes, ma'am. The first time of Christ was predicted very early. He died. Yes. And uh, all the other prophecies too. Why is the second coming not predicted like this? You know, to the. Oh, accurate timing. Yeah. Okay. Now, the thing is. Uh, God kept that the day of second him or event of second coming, okay, away from God. Even disciples asked and said, uh, 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 Master, when are we going to come back? Acts chapter 1, 6 uh, and 7, it says, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons. It is not for you. So God kept that one kind of uh, away from us. So that, suppose if God has given that uh, already in the Bible, then all of us would be thinking and say, Oh, that coming is not now. It is a few more years is there, another five years, another two years. So let me uh, live uh, everything, enjoy my life in the world. Then uh, when that uh, time is coming near, maybe six months before that, I'll stop everything. I'll take back his money. I'll be good. Then I can uh, go to heaven. I know, it's a human tendency. It's just like God doesn't want to give that more God did not give that accurate year when Jesus is going to come back second time. But he has given enough signs, enough signs of the second coming, so that we will understand Jesus is coming soon. Thank you. Uh, continue to uphold me in your prayer. And you can uh, follow my Facebook as well as uh, YouTube of Sashara and Bob so that we'll upload them, these lessons in advance. Then, uh, we can do that. Let's pray before we come to the Father. We want to thank you for this wonderful, blessed book of Book of Daniel, which we are going to study these three months. Bless each one of us so that we individually, as families, as a church, as an organization, we can receive rich blessings by studying Book of uh, Daniel. Bless uh, Dr. Elias who wrote this uh, book of uh, lessons for us. Bless each one of us. Thank you, Lord, as we move into divine service because. I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank you.